here we are once again. This time we are making our way to Xi'an to see what unfolds. I've got a few more videos to edit and not much free time to spare. Oh, by the way, just so you know, the footage was taken in March. And back then, I didn't have a definite plan for the next day of this trip. Traveling by train is a unique experience. You get to see the road from a different perspective, through a different lens. And if you are willing to pay a bit extra, you can enjoy a more comfortable trip with plenty of space. But there is a downer though. Those windows, man. It's a shame the windows weren't cleaned. But even so, the scene outside was something else. We are talking about the kind of sights that make the South of Chile a feast. A real treat for the eyes. Sweeping landscapes, rolling hills, and the kind of scenery that makes you feel like you are living in a postcard. So, there you have it, a taste of what's coming up. Next up, the rest of this small adventure. I arrived at night and rested up. Well, we the following day we set off southwest toward Tantuco. It turned out to be a foggy morning. Summer was behind us. The fall was just around the corner. A trip of about 2 hours and 40 minutes leading us to Laguna de Laja National Park. Going on these trips with friends over the weekend can feel a bit rushed, but it's worth it. Getting out into nature is something we all need from time to time. You and I can weather any storm. The landscapes in the countryside are like a breath of fresh air for the soul. As we got closer, we discovered a few special spots that were worth stopping for. For this one, I wanted to capture the mountain in the background, which look amazing how the surrounding landscape embraced the peak. I used my 75 to 300 mm lenses. Almost near the entrance of the national park, there was this waterfall right there by the side of the road.
got there, we were told to register and pay the entry fee. Hola, buenos días. Buenos días. Bien, gracias. ¿De dónde vienen? De Chillán. Chillán. ¿Traes mascota? No. no. ¿Tienes una reserva? No, yo he dicho, quiero que sea. ¿Te has presionado ahí al ladito? Ya. ¿Tienes una reserva de todo? ¿Más sueco? ¿Tres de esa máquina que está? Ah, ya. ¿Tienes cualquier fotografía que yo busco reserva? Pinchen ahí. De ahí se presionan para que no se lo vean en la caja. Y cantidad de entrada de una reserva. Ah, ya, ya. Una que tenga lista. ¿Se hace el pago por ahí mismo? Por ahí no, se hace la caja. Ah, yo. ¿Ya? No. Una que tenga lista, porque no creo que eso se ingresa. Gracias. ¿Qué creen que me va a ayudar? Sí, por favor. <risa> While my friend was registering us, I took a few pictures of this bridge and the small stream of water. The entry fee happened to be way with this time. <laughs> The park ranger invited us to follow a hiking trail, Las Chilcas, a trail that led to several waterfalls. I look at these trails and they look well kept designed to let the tourists enjoy them without disturbing the natural surroundings. So, it is an easy hike. This trail is where the Laja River starts, and it has two falls, the Chilcas Waterfall and El Torbellino. I took my wide-angle lenses to capture these wonderful landscapes. The issue that I found is that it was midday with no clouds, and the harsh sunlight created a strong contrast, making tricky to get the exact pictures I wanted. Usually I don't travel with other photographers, so explaining the benefits of early mornings or late evenings can be a challenge. <laughs> Take a look at this. This is an amazing waterfall. I switched my lenses to take a closer shot of the waterfall Las Chilcas. For this one, I use an ND filter to make the water appear smooth with a longer exposure. My body has an Inta 360 camera. He got some footage that looked like it was taken from the air. It's cool, but I'm not a fan of the distortion it creates. The next waterfall to see was El Torpellino, which I'm not proud of what I got from this shot, but it is what it is. Despite the sunny day, some of the photos turned out to be better than I thought. I don't know, I have this imposter syndrome that tells me that my pictures are trash. Which, I can live with it, because it's just a hobby. But I still have it in what I actually do for a living, which is mostly architectural visualization. I don't believe my renders are up to par, but others find it amazing. 
Okay, enough mumbo jumbo, back with the video. Entonces, ahí es el circuito, después vuelven al camino principal, toman el vehículo y siguen hacia arriba. Van a llegar arriba donde se ven esos techos. Sí. ¿Ya? Ajá. Desde ahí como 300 metros más arriba tenemos un desvío a la izquierda y otro que sigue derecho que dice los barros Pichachén. Toma ese que dice los barros Pichachén y como un kilómetro y medio más adentro van a encontrar el monumento donde fallecieron los soldados. Ah. ¿Ya? Ahí se gusta, se bajan, tienen buena vista para ver la laguna. Our journey continues toward the monument, the one commemorating the Antuco tragedy. In the heart of the national park, a solemn monument is stand as a testament to the fallen soldiers of the Antuco tragedy. Crafted with reverence, it immortalizes their sacrifice and serves as a reminder of nature's risks. Put your hands on me. Amid the serene setting of the park, visiting the monument offers a space for reflection. The rustle of the wind and the lap of Laguna de Lajas waters remind us of life's fragility and the strength of the human spirit. The Antuco tragedy stands as a somber chapter in Chile's history. On May 18, 2005, a group of young soldiers faced a fatal avalanche during a winter training exercise on Cerro Santa Barbara in the Andes. This avalanche claimed 45 lives, leaving an indelible mark on the nation's memory. On that fateful day, weather warnings were issued about deteriorating conditions, including the risk of avalanches. Unfortunately, these warnings went unnoticed amid the rush of preparations and the urgency of training. This impact reverberated, shattering families, friends and communities. This poignant monument symbolizes resilience and unity, embodying solidarity in adversity. The design of this monument got me from far away. The minimalistic elements settle in the middle of the remnant dark soil of this volcanic area and gives you a scene out of this war. Along with the aged Russian metal, the monument stands out like it was intended to. Maybe they got the inspiration from the Space Odyssey monolith, but it is definitely something. My money shot is the fierce one you saw from far away. It has the perfect balance, and that single click was enough to make the whole journey worthwhile. With digital cameras we have these infinite shots, we could snap hundreds, even thousands, and if luck is on our side, voila, the money shot. As we continue along, my eye spotted this part of the road that looked interesting to me. I wanted to compress the curves of the road by using a longer lenses. The outcome? Well, Let's say it wasn't a perfect match of what I had in mind. Seems like my money shot was taken, so I was happy even if I didn't get something more from this trip. Igual cuando venían de acá, me escribieron un lleno de dinero, también por dentro, por dentro, van a buscar los We continue to Laguna de Laja, where we could see the peak of the volcano, which, gotta be honest, it fell a bit flat. Now, don't get me wrong, winter might do wonders here. Maybe this could be a different story. But on the final days of summer, under the plain old sunlight, there is not much to write home about. We move on, we decided to explore more areas near the lake. There were these rock formations that we walk a bit, and a bit of trekking reward us with a secret pocket beach. With this bar, I tried to get a long exposure shot, but like before, the light was too harsh to get the creamy look of the water, and I mean, you can see how the highlights in the picture are way too strong on the right side. Try to balance things out with an end filter, but sometimes, well, it's a losing game. All in all, from this trip, I was quite happy with the picture of the monolith, a clear winner. 
And you know what? The waterfall snaps held their own too. We headed back to Chiyan to have some food and rest for the next day, for the next spot to visit. And what's next on the agenda? A fresh day, a new destination. This time a few more faces joined the group, my pulse buddies. We were planning to see if the new Lake National Reserve was open, but it is temporarily closed, so we went to a local favorite instead, Las Turbinas Falls and the Digijin River. Photographing this waterfall was a hassle. The water drops getting in the lenses were too hard to avoid, and the sun slowly wanted its own spotlight, with the flare in the lenses blocking a lot of the waterfall below. So, none of the shots taken were worthy of editing. But these slow mo shots? A lifesaver. They turn out to look dope. A craving that is knocking you out We walk into the rock formation behind the waterfall Where I could get something interesting I like the texture I got from the wet rock In contrast with the stream water on the left side We didn't stop there, oh no. We ascend uphill, chasing the source of the stream from above. And grab a few shots. This time the long exposure shots work better. that elevated spot, a panoramic piece, the river embraced by lush greenery of the surrounding landscapes, a true feast for the eyes. After exploring the areas and taking some pictures, I took a swing in the river, which was freaking cold but refreshing a nice reward from the nice sunny day hanging out with my camera in the great outdoors it's like hitting the pause button of life's mayhem releasing all the accumulated stress from day-to-day -day life having some snacks and a beer with nice people on the side of the river not thinking about the thing you need to do at the moment there's nothing to do, just to be there and enjoy pure nowness. And now, as I trace my path back home leaving Las Turbinas waterfalls behind, passing through Chiyan streets. A sense of tranquility washes over. With each mile on the road, a feeling of contentment settles in. As the train carries me, a passenger once again, the window becomes a canvas for reflection. Sometimes I face an inner battle when I'm out taking pictures. I question myself as to whether the camera becomes a wall between me and the moment or an extension of reality for me to appreciate. Like, maybe I don't connect with the surroundings because I'm behind a glass taking a snap. You are either in photographer mode or in mindful mode. Can you be both? 
in a way, with the camera, you see more than the average person can spot. But at the same time, your sight becomes your main active sense, leaving your other senses behind from feeling the moment fully. I guess, photography is just a different way to appreciate and connect with reality. Well, it's time to wrap up this chapter. Until next time, folks, thanks for tagging along, and I hope to see you in the next one. Peace out.